Well, we're back with football here on the Sportsmax Zone. Ricardo Chambers has a recap of the action from our Jamaica Premier League doubleheader at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex on Monday. It promised to be a threatening Jamaica Premier League doubleheader at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. And boy, did it deliver the first game. Saw so second placed Cavalier taking on sixth placed Humble Lion. And the opening goal came in the 21st minute. Cavalier goalkeeper Vina Barclay fouling Rashane Sharp in the box after a wild attempt at a claim. The ever reliable Humble Lion captain Andrew Vanzi stepping up and coolly slotting home to give the Clarendon based team the lead. The 2021 champions Cavalier fought back in the second half and after a bit of untidy play in the box, their leading scorer Colin Anderson equalised with a poacher's finish after 49 minutes. Then, after some good play by Dwayne Atkinson, Anderson applied a diving header to score the winner, his eighth goal of the JPL season, coming in the 63rd minute. And again, and again, a hat-trick in the last game. A double so far in this one, and Cavalier, they have turned this around, and they lead Humble Lion by two goals to one. Cavalier holding on for all three points. Now, over to the league leaders, the unbeaten Mount Pleasant taking on a dangerous Arnett Gardens team. Arnett hoping to put on a show for their fans in the jungle and put on a show they did. The jungle started like a house on fire. Veteran Fabian Reed firing a missile past the far chambers in the 26th minute. One nil to the home side. It was then the turn of fan favourite Damari Deacon to join the party in first half stoppage time. The 26 year old nodding home from a teasing Kimani Arbuin cross. A second assist of the game for Arbuin as Arnett went to the break with a 2 nil advantage. Mount Pleasant weren't about to just roll over, however, and they started their comeback four minutes after the break. Kevon Isaacs finding the league's top scorer, Trevante Stewart, with a delightful through ball to cut the deficit in half in the 49th minute. But Arnett Gardens dampened any hopes of a Mount Pleasant comeback very quickly, with Fabian Reed turning provider for Ajuma Johnson in the 57th minute. Mount Pleasant tried their best to make Arnett sweat for the remainder of the game, but despite a straight red for Arnett Gardens substitute Rashiki Kelson and a late stoppage time penalty by Trevante Stewart to retake the Golden Boot lead, Arnett held on to hand Mount Pleasant their first loss of the season. Arnett Gardens just managed to win it. Well, both coaches spoke after the game. A uh, pretty good game, you know, good attacking, good attacking game tonight. You know, I think we did what we had to do in terms of closing them down quick. So you, you give the team time to play, they will play because they know how to play. The fuck them we got these three points, you know, I, I thought we played well. You know, one of our better games. So when you play a team like Mount Pleasant, you have to come with your, your A game. You know, the team that can move the ball around. So what we did tonight, press them, move the ball around, when you got our chances, we took them. Would you? The place is a bit disappointed, but um, kudos to the Arnett Garden team. I think they, they play well this afternoon and they deserve the three points. I think we, we show a lot of commitment in the second half. I think the first half we didn't came out, but I think it was a much better improved performance. We, we have to came from behind twice, but unfortunately we couldn't have snipped something out of the game. These are the results from match week nine in the JPL. No goals in that draw between Bay United and Chapelton Maroons. No goals between Tivoli and Portmore United. Waterhouse a 4-0 win over Harbour View. Don Beholden 2-0 against Montego Bay United. A 2-0 draw between Falkland and Malines United. Cavalier overcoming Humble Line 2-1. And Arnett Gardens 3-2 against Mount Pleasant. Right, let's take a look now at the table. So Mount Pleasant still at the top of the table, even after defeat on 20 points. Cavalier in second position on 19. Arnett Gardens in third spot on 17. Harbourview having played nine matches, a total of 15 points. Then Waterhouse, we can see them in seventh spot on 13 points. And in the relegation zone, Fair United, six points and Falkland, two points. So... Lance and George, we have a lot to talk about where these matches are concerned. Cavalier overcoming Humble Lion. We'll start with that one. You watched? Uh, well, yeah. Well, no, we were on air when that game yes. actually started. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, Cavalier have been very good this season. Um, they were bad last year as they defended the Premier League title, that must be said. The campaign was troubled, never steady, and uh, they didn't look their usual selves. So far, with all the speed, with the benefit of retaining some players, which is not the, what the Cavalier model wants. They wouldn't mind if every year they start with a new squad of 23 or 22. But he has some players carried over from the last season who are helping significantly this year. I'm very happy to see Colin Anderson sitting on eight goals for this season. Yeah, six man of the match. Yeah, or seven. I think it's five or se seven goals for the start of, seven, for the season yeah. because Trevante Stewart now has eight. To see him on seven goals because this is a player, a converted a, 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 a player converted from a, a sprinter in, in school, well, a runner, to a footballer. Uh, there were people who had some snide comments to make about him over ever since his introduction to the Premier League by Cavalier. But every season we've seen Colin Anderson as a footballer, he has improved. And that's credit to the young man himself and credit to his coaches at Cavalier, including, of course, the technical director, Rudolf Speed. So Cavalier have a goal scorer. When they were most dangerous in the Premier League with the MS, the MM, Messi, Marsh and... Messi, Marshall, and Hamilton, the MMH yeah. or HMM or whatever it is they want to call them. MHM. MHM. That's yeah. what they call them, yeah. They, they never won the Premier League with that trio, <laughs> but they did win without a, a, a regular, a potent goal scorer. Anderson looks to have the touch this season, and when you have a man who can tuck away chances, then you have a chance of doing anything. So I really, really love what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, all five of Cavaliers' last goals have been scored by him. Um, hat trick in the one before this and two last night. Um, really pleasing to see him. He's big, he's strong, he's fast. Um, and technically, he has improved a lot. Rudolf Speed, the technical director at the Cavalier team, spoke in one of the recent post-match interviews that he is one of the most satisfying products that he has seen come out of Cavalier because of where he is now, given where he was four years ago. Mm -hmm. Because um, he has done a lot of work with his technique and he has improved a lot. And because of his physical strength and his speed, he's very, very hard to contain. Um, Cavalier unbeaten now in their last four matches with three wins, um, really doing well. And they are positioned quite nicely here uh, to advance to the playoffs and make a run for the championship, which will be their second in three years. Yeah, and speaking about hard to contain, I felt as if Mount Pleasant at the top of the table would have been difficult to, you know, beat them. But Annette Gardens came out all guns blazing and they were able to get that job done, all three points for them. When, when a team is hot in the league and you go to the jungle, you know <laughs> you, you, you have a, 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 a task and a half on your hands because yeah. it's almost as if the Annette Gardens players and the Annette Gardens spectators are affronted that they're, yeah. is there another lead, team in the league that they say is hotter than us, <laughs> hot, hotter than our team. Yeah. It was a good performance from Tigat Davis's men. Uh, the, 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 the outstanding, right, the outstanding contribution from Fabian Reed, the captain. Look at this finish. Wow. Yeah, I had to send him a message to say, big man, that was a brilliant goal. Yeah, I haven't checked his response just yet, but he, 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 when you have quality like that, a player who has seen it all, done it all, Fabian Reed has played in every position for Arnett Gardens except goalkeeper in his Premier League career. A true professional. This team has the potential to do so many great things, but you know, the, the Arnett Gardens psyche, the Arnett Gardens team, the individuals, the, 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 the football club, a bit capricious, you not know what you're going to get from time to time, yeah. but they did the business last night, stopping the mighty Mount Pleasant. Yeah, they looked very, very hot. And George mentioned Fabian. Fabian, uh, at the end of the you know the match, yeah. was so elated with that goal. He said he would rank rank it in one of his top three. Yeah, because he said that because he normally scores his goals from inside the box. So scoring from outside the box with just a, a bullet strike would be very, very pleasing to him. So he and he's one of the older members of the Arnett Gardens team. So he sees himself as the elder statesman in the in the setup and wants to contribute in a big way and to let but the, isn't he I, I think he's the only player over 30 in, in the current the, Arnett setup yes yes he would be because there no he, he would be so he's the elder statesman and he has 62 in, goals in, 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 from, from every respect yeah so very very satisfying for Arnett one of the intriguing things about the match last night would, would have been the opposing coaches Tigat Davis for Arnett and Theodore Whitmore for Mount Pleasant because they were teammates in their playing days for SIBA which is now Montego Bay United and uh, tactically, I think they would know each other very well. So that was a bit of a chess game that we saw last night. And um, Whitmore, uh, gracious in defeat last night. He didn't think his team played as well as they could have, but he handed it to Arnett. They played with a lot of energy. They, they pressed hard from the opening whistle 
and uh, they deserve to win. And, and losing coach Whitmore said so himself. Come and on. don't forget that Tika Davis was getting one over the team that fired him yes. uh, over a season ago. <laughs> That's Mount right. Pleasant, didn't have success with them. Yeah. So it, would have, it must have been pleasing for him to, to beat them in the JP. <laughs> Especially yeah. when they're at the top of the table. It's not like if they're struggling. Right, they're at the top right, of the right. table, I beat you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but still to come on today's show, Carabao Cup recap, plus a chat with some key Mount Pleasant stakeholders ahead of a one-week combine from the 20th to the 28th of uh, January. The Sunshine Girls, uh, and uh, they will be getting ready for action on Wednesday afternoon Caribbean time. Uh, this is game one of a three-test series against the England Roses. And action will begin 2.15 in Jamaica. That's 3.15 in the rest of the Caribbean. You can watch it live on Sportsmax on Wednesday afternoon. Thank you for watching Sportsmax on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and to click the notification bell to stay informed.